Hey guys, um, so they delivered the garage doors. I'm going ahead and opened one set of tracks, lay them out, trying to figure out what I'm gonna need to go up to this tall, tall ceiling. I had to go out and buy a 12 foot step ladder to reach it. Hung a single broken shop light up here. It's kind of like bootleg plugged into the meter. It is really cold out today here in West Virginia. Like the highest is 25 and the low is like 18 or something. It's very, very cold for November, much colder than usual. Um, would really like to get these doors in. Um, but I have never done this before. So I watched a bunch, watch a bunch of YouTube videos. The guy who dropped the doors off, he was saying, he said, these are really hard to go into with your tracks because if you line your track up, he's like, you just don't have that much adjustability and you have to screw through. So he says the trim that is supplied in the kits, which is right over here in this bag, he said it is wide enough that if you put a two by four, screw it against a steel frame with self tappers, then you can then use wood screws to go through this. He said that makes the whole thing go a lot easier. So I went to Home Depot. He recommended I just go with two by sixes to have the width that I need to adjust it for the door. So I got four um, two by six, ten, four 10 foot two by sixes. Um, you can't go with your, um, uh, the board slip in my head, but you can't go with your weather protected lumber because it will corrode the frame of this building because it's steel and the stuff they use to treat the wood, the treated wood is uh, corrosive. So I had to go with untreated, so I'm gonna have to paint it first. So even though it's cold today, I'm gonna be doing some painting. I'm gonna paint those two by sixes, um, some cheap paints, trying to protect them um, from any water that infiltrates and make them look a little nicer. So just using Krylon satin black. Um, and we'll be using a really cheap, really big brush. Finish not as important, just trying to get it done. I want to get them painted so they can sit out in the sun while I'm working on other things here today. And then we'll get them screwed in, maybe try and hang these doors this evening. So anyway, I'm excited to have the doors in. They look really nice. I haven't opened the boxes yet. Um, I'm gonna film myself opening them. The guy said to do that just to make sure nothing's damaged. So I'm not really familiar with these. You putting these springs in and all that stuff. I did pick up some um, slotted track from, this is sold at Lowe's and Home Depot. I'm hoping that'll be long enough to go up to that truss. Um, I have two pieces there. I think one's like four foot and one's five foot maybe, or it's something like that. I didn't know what I would need. It's really hard to tell coming back. So I just figured I would hang it, put a level on it, figure it out, have more than I need. Got a whole bunch of hardware. We got machine, machine screws, um, nuts, washers, lock washers, self tappers. And then I got these um, wing nuts to put the uh, the wood into the the uh, channel on the door. So who knows? With some luck, maybe I'll get at least one door hung by this evening. My brother-in-law was going to help me. He said get some more wood, so I got some more, painted some more. He suggested, um, you know, we put wood on the sides here and he would like to go ahead and put um, two by, I guess two by sixes the whole way across this as a header so we had something to screw into. So knowing I was gonna put wood over this and knowing that I needed to brace this somehow, I went and cut a bunch of pieces to fit in here. Um, we got, Lots of L brackets there to try and attach them in. So I was gonna do, you can kind of see them laying over there. I was gonna do two on each side because the sides are only 10 feet and do four down the middle because that's less supported and that's like almost 14 feet. We've got our wood up for our garage doors. I, the garage door guy that dropped off these doors, I think I mentioned, he said this is how he would do it. Um, he said he would very easily put them up here well, I wanted the frame to be even all around. This, it was kind of like you could hit it and move that. This makes it a lot, um, actually improved the rigidity a lot. I might actually extend it up to the peak um, just to have that reinforcement on that single pillar. So that's done. And then we can, 
like I was watching some videos on YouTube, this isn't rocket science. It looks like it would make it a lot easier to have a second person here, especially with 10 foot wide doors. The guy said, um, basically once you unbox them, there's nothing they can do about it if they're damaged. So he recommended maybe documenting it, he said. So. Hey guys, it is absolutely freezing out tonight. Um, I'm just tired of being cold. I put these garage doors up. I told my helper I had to go up. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess I'll have to see what I have to do that day. So he's not coming basically. So I'm doing it myself and a little annoyed by that. So we're gonna follow our clopane instructions for the first time because we got two doors. We'll see how this goes. I've seen a couple on YouTube that are a little different than this, but I don't know what I'm doing. So for now, we'll just stick with the manufacturer's recommendations. First step is open up your boxes. Um, you'll have a piece in the box that has the rubber, um, the rubber molding on the bottom, which you can see here. And it's got aluminum strip in it. This came pre-installed. Uh, the next thing you do, you have two of these brackets together. You just wiggle them back and forth, snap them apart, screw them in. There's a big bag of these take home sheet metal screws you screw them in um, and then your hinges are numbered the instructions tell you what numbers to use where and you screw them in where the holes are everything's pre-drilled I'm not using a lock and I decided not to install t-handles um, these 10 foot wide doors have five recessed squares and basically the instructions show you installing your t-handle to pull up on the door if your opener wasn't working right here um, and that's what they said to do. They called Clope. They were like, no, you can't install them in the center because it would end up in the middle of the pattern. It has to be on the bottom edge. Like, so you have to install off center where these pre-indented holes are. Um, I thought that would look kind of dumb from the outside, so I just didn't put it on. It's only necessary for not using an opener, which we are. Um, so then you do the same thing with your second piece. In my case, my doors are nine foot tall, so all the other remaining sections are 18 inches. Depending on the height of your door, there's a chart in your instructions that'll tell you which sections have to go in which order. Clopay says to do it this way. They say not to install these first, which I've seen some people do online. So each section that you put in, you put a nail in, bend it around the corner of the door. That holds it up. And they're telling me just to keep assembling the door, screwing my hinges together every time I add a section. So we've got sections one and two up. Um, we've got section three here. And um, we're gonna set the camera back and just kind of uh, probably end up doing like a time lapse. Oh, the one thing I forgot, your trim. Uh, Clopay says you uh, a trim piece. They show the doors resting against it, which I didn't think it would really work with the rubber, so I flipped it around. Um, they tell you not to install it permanently, just to tack it in flush with your door. So that's what we did. So this is flush with our door. As you can see, our panels are resting against this trim, which is nailed in place. Um, that's kind of what's holding them in there right now. So we'll um, trust in the system and we'll build it up and we'll see where that gets us. Hopefully maybe with one door done by the end of the evening here, but who knows? I'm expecting setbacks because it's me, so. So it's a little annoying. The instructions are for like a standard height, um, seven or eight foot tall door. And then they have a supplement for the taller doors. So the instructions say that this will be the last section. They have like 
uh, directions for how to install that. And then um, the supplement just has the assembly order for the remaining panels and it doesn't mention anywhere else. So I guess we'll just proceed the way we have been, um, trying to use the hinges the way we have been. Because there's a few different styled hinges and they're all numbered differently. So they have different, um, like these ones have two hinges here. So the way the hinge is different. And then they also have different hole spacing, um, depending on where they go. You can see this one has like one uh, short hole, one slotted hole. This one has two slotted holes with a hole in the middle. So anyway, I guess we'll just try and figure it out. your eyes. your eyes all right as you can see we got those panels up um i did put the hinges on one backwards if you watch carefully i'm sure you noticed but basically these are all just held up with these nails tapped into the frame so i'm thinking this is why the guy told me to do the wood or one of the reasons anyway i am going to go inside and warm up some coffee and then the next step it looks like is going to be sliding our rollers in all these and then i'm guessing we will put the tracks on so um, i'd at least like to get the vertical tracks in tonight so i have something holding us in here in case we got like a windstorm or something tonight um not that one's forecast but because once we get the vertical tracks in these can just sit here until i have time to do the rest it's still not 100 percent sure what our clearance is going to be like for those horizontals. So we'll see when we come back. Anyway, me and the GoPro are going to go inside and warm up. All right, so skipping ahead the instructions, like there's a bunch of steps about attaching garage openers and stuff. I'm not worried about that right now. But um, the tracks are really easy to install because I've seen tracks that like had this shape here on both sides and they wrapped around the wheels but this one doesn't so you basically just put it this way 
and then roll it in and the tracks are captured. Um, my problem is when you kind of like turn it like you would to install it, all those nails are <laughs> now kind of in the way. I'm not sure what they're going for there with that. But we have one of them all screwed in there. So I guess they don't touch. I don't know like how tight you want it, but uh, that's it. Just put some screws in it, get some wood screws put in there. I think <coughs> the instructions are okay for this. Like half of this stuff just doesn't apply to mine. Like, like they tell you how to put all these tracks together and the brackets and everything. And I think the, um, the kits you get at like Home Depot, the hardware kit, the tracks and everything fits in a box like the size of this. The track segments are all have to be bolted together. When you custom order them, this all comes. Um, these are like riveted, you can see that. Um, so anyway, half of it doesn't apply to me. I'm trying to figure out like where I need to pick up because they're like, oh yeah, do this little thing and then bolt this to that, do this little thing, bolt this to that. And I'm like, well, all mine's all bolted together. It's all one piece. So um, I just want to get these screwed in before I go in. all of our nails out. That's screwed in, so that's actually being held up by the bracket. And nothing to do now, do the other side. Um, get that held up and then it is bitterly cold out here, so I may be done for the night. But at least that'll be held up. So the temptation now is to throw that other door together and slap it up there so I can turn these heaters back on and try and get warm, but I think I'm going to go inside for a minute. All right, as you can see, um, I stayed up last night and finished up these doors. Um, I did not do the horizontal brackets, so there's, they don't roll up and down or anything yet. The only thing we did was get the rollers in, all the hinges on, uh, routed my cables, my lift cables. I actually physically got the doors up. So, this is what they look like from outside. They look pretty good. And everything's done. So, they should be ready to put the horizontals up. Um, they recommend you support the rear of the horizontals with like a rope hanging from the ceiling or a ladder and bolt them on. They're pretty heavy. Like I said, I guess on uh, once you buy like Home Depot, they'll be multiple piece. On these, they're just one big piece. And again, all riveted together here. So the only bolts go right here and right here where those join up with what they call the flag, the flag bracket, I think, which is up here. Anyway, trying to figure that out will be the next challenge. Um, once those are up, then I will have the torsion springs, which are right here. And those have like an elaborate mounting system. They use these pieces of pipe that's all included with your doors. Um, and you have to wind the torsion bars, which I've heard is like its own thing. Hey guys, so um, the problem that I'm having with these horizontal tracks for the garage door openers is that, well, first off, the instructions say to put these a half inch off the ground, and I remembered that, and then I forgot it. So I did it for that one, but not for this one. So the tops of these are like a half inch off, and the instructions say they need to be the exact same height. So I'm going to have to rehang one and either put this one a half inch up 
or this one on the ground. These ones I put both all the way down, so they could be okay. Um, the way the tracks tilt like away at the top, it might be better to move them up because that would keep the door against the frame a little further up. You're gonna put, I'm gonna put trim on them eventually, but it still help. Um, and then I think, you know, if there's water or something, we're supposed to keep these kind of out of that. So that's one thing I messed up. So it's not really that hard, especially on this side where they're not um, screwed in. The only bad part is there is no vertical adjustment in these. So you have to take them all out and slide it up and then screw them back in. Um, the one thing I could do is put a screw in one of the vertical slots at the top just to make it easier to hold that together while I do it. But that's small potatoes compared to this, which is what I'm trying to figure out here. Let me get up on the ladder, I'll show you. So the instructions show these tracks being secured here at this hole. Um, and if you look at the way they are made on this side, um, they sort of have this like reinforcing rib here that runs up um, along it. So if you tried to bolt a piece of angle to this side, you would hit that. There's no hole strode for it. They anticipated you would secure at the back. And the instructions say it is critical that they be secured in the last six inches of track, which is, you know, about here over. Um, so would love to secure them in six inches. The problem is if you look um, we have this column here and this column here and our truck ends just dead center in the middle. So I have several different options I could do. The first thing you could do is just forget the instructions saying that's critical, secure them right here to this, um, you know, put some angle up on this, brace it down to this, drill your holes. <coughs> Excuse me, I've seen a lot of people online do that not screwing at the end that I'm sure it's fine um, the second option would be to bridge these two columns and I have all of that heavy angle that's done on the saw horses so I could screw some into this um, the one of the problems with that is that this is diagonal the angle would end up being at an angle and that makes it kind of harder to bolt stuff to but that's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now because that's like 50 inches between those columns and just doing 50 but then you got to think you're doing 50 inches up there 50 inches up there 50 inches right there 50 inches so you need four of those um, because you're going to be bridging that gap on all four that's that's both sides for both doors the other option that I've seen people do is they will just take a Basically like what I did here with the two by sixes, and I could just span at the 10 foot mark, I could span the building, and that would give me something to hang those off of. But again, that's kind of gonna end up with the exact same situation. So, you know, this isn't necessarily the building company's fault, but I never asked where these columns would be and if you wanted like a 10 foot door because if you look at this like this is a nine foot door so if it would have gone for a standard height eight foot door it would have ended right here so you kind of be almost level to go with that but where i'm going with that is if i was doing this over again i would have said hey make sure i have a column nine feet in or whatever from however long the horizontal track is going to be i want to call them there and if that meant I had to pay for one more column or whatever, like to me, that would have been worth it to have it right where I wanted it. So that was one of those things where I just kind of like tossed my hands up and said like, hey, I'll get what I get and I'll make it work. And I can, we have this very heavy angle I picked up at the surplus store and I have enough of it to bridge all of those gaps, but still it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Um, but each of these segments is eight feet long. So I have four of them. So I should be able to cut like 50 inches off all of them and still have two pieces long enough to cover that, um, 
that gap that comes down uh, so I can drop down from the, the peak of this roof down to these tracks. That's actually, it's like less than four feet. Um, so that's the plan for now, it's just to try and bridge all those gaps. Um, that's gonna be a pain in the butt, and I think I'm gonna need at least one more piece of angle, but. Anyway, um, that's where things stand with that. Um, my longtime dog, I've had her for 13 years, she passed away, so I'm taking her in to get cremated. Um, that's just this, it's the black and white dog you may have seen on some of my videos. Um, it's really sad, it's been a crappy day or two. Well, I would like to try and make some more progress on this, trying to get too hemmed up by stuff. So, anyway, um, we will overcome this just like we overcome everything else. Just got to figure out the best way to do it. Hey guys, I've been working on and off. Um, kind of took a break, but I try to wrap my head around just exactly how to do this. And this is the best I can come up with. Um, I use the heavy gauge that I got from a surplus store and I ran it across from this, um, this beam to this beam, secured it with two quarter inch self tappers. Um, we have two um, around quarter inch bolts and then we have our like 916 bolt that goes one inch through the track. That's to stop the end of the door. Um, I left slack on these, but you know, once I get the final height and uh, width, I can cut those off. I checked my squares before I mounted these, but the way this metal is, it has, like once you bolt it up, it'll have a little bit of flex. So this may be off just a little bit. So if it's flexing in, I can move it out a hole and stuff. So I don't want to trim any of that until everything is up and I know it's working. Um, up here, I, um, I ran two more of those heavy uh, surplus angles right off of the roof. And then I ran, I, honestly, the smaller ones would have been better for this, but I didn't have any long enough sections. So we used that heavy stuff down. Um, that won't hurt anything. In fact, there's actually room here to put like another bolt or two in if I wanted to. Um, as you can see, just with that, because it hangs so far, it's very sway. So once we drop our second one down for our other door, I'm gonna box those off each other. That should completely resist any side to side movement. Um, you can also, I could also brace them up further off of the roof. Um, I didn't put uh, anything up there to run them off of, but I have all these random short sections and I'm not going to use these at all, I don't think. So I could trim one of these and put it up um, between those two and then I could run diagonals up to that if I need to. I've got plenty of angle laying around here. Um, most of what's on the floor here is all just spare stuff at this point. Um, the only other thing I'll show you tonight, um, as you can see that surplus angle up there at the top, it points straight down even though these trusses are at an angle. So what I did is I brought my press in here, made myself a little jig to clamp it down. And I was trying to just squeeze it even with the press, but the angle didn't want to play nice. So I ended up just using a, a machinist hammer and um, I would clamp the angle down. This, this part here wanted to bend the long part and then I would just tap the angle that I needed in with the hammer. Um, it's slightly wavy, it's gonna get cranked down with those um, self-tappers, they'll draw it straight. But that, um, that will allow it to sit against the truss. As the truss goes up, this actually gets flipped around when it's installed and that makes the gives me a 90 degree off of the wall to run my um, supports down to the track. I'm kind of hoping you can see that, just how that works there. So we tap those ears down this way. Um, the end result is that we used a lot of angle. Um, but like I said, with them saying it's critical to support that end, I didn't want to mess around with it. And at this point in the garage build, like what's another 50 bucks and um, pre-punch steel angle. And as you can tell, that's super stout. Um, these doors don't weigh that much, but I, I could do a pull up off of that and it wouldn't go anywhere. It's very, very sturdy. And it'll be the same up there once that's done with two of those together boxed off and with the option to run diagonals up. You know, that's 
Um, it's even stronger if you think about it than if it did end at one of the columns because now you have the weight being shared by two columns. And this, um, this punched angle here is really thick, the stuff that I picked up. So it's definitely more than capable of bearing the weight of these doors. So I'm um, pleased with the progress. I would have liked to have got the other track up. I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to square this one up first or go ahead and mount the second track and square them up together. I'm kind of thinking I'll get both tracks up since squaring these up will kind of depend on each other, I think, for now. Um, but it is late. Probably going to call a night, get some shut-eye, and try and hit this in the morning. Hey, guys. Uh, these are the garage doors. Um, I just finished measuring my diagonals. I finished measuring my track width. This one was like dead on and this one over here was off. Um, this side seemed like it was pretty much straight but it was uh, a little bit too wide here in the move. Or too, yeah, too wide here so I had to move that out on that bracket. Um, they're all, the diagonals are within a half inch which is what the instructions say. Kind of hard to get them perfect when you're dealing with like just being able to move over one hole, basically. But I went ahead and trimmed that metal. This was like kind of swaying, so I, I uh, boxed them in, like I said, and then I ran some right angle brackets up into those ceiling hangers, and then right there, and then the other side up there, I ran angle up through the channel and up into the joist. So as you can see, if I shake this, it does have a little wiggle, but that is the entire bracket wiggling, including those. <clears throat> so I think I have as much strength as I can going off that. The only other way to make this stronger would be to run it off of this and then go out to like those. Those aren't super thick, those purlins. Um, and the only way to do that would be to cut a short section of angle like this flip it over, screw it through the wings of the purlin with self tappers to give me like a little bracket and then run a, a long piece of angle all the way out to that purlin. And that would definitely, even doing one side of those would definitely stop any sway. But um, at what expense? Just be a lot of uh, extra cutting and screwing and stuff. The other thing is I had talked about earlier, like one option being to run a board kind of across the entire thing to mount all these two, which would have been a lot faster than trying to fab things up this way. But, but I decided against that because I have a rolling gantry crane that I'm sure many of you have seen. Well, with the doors um, down, I could roll the gantry crane. And of course I can't, I'm always gonna have that there, but I could roll one corner of it over all the way over here. And if you kind of see your line of sight, like if you had something in here you wanted to lift, uh, they would just open it up to doing that. If you're on a board all the way across, you lose all of this headroom where the garage doors are. So, you know, you can put the door up, pull something in, close it, and then you could slide something tall back in there. Or if, um, if I bring the cab over in here, I may have still have room to roll the cab forward. If you put a 10 foot board over it, probably not gonna have room to roll the cab forward in here, stuff like that. So I wanted to preserve that headroom that I had. I'm sure there's people watching this thinking, this isn't the way to do it, or maybe it needs to be stronger. We'll see, if it needs strengthened, I can run a diagonal to it or something, but it's as strong as I know how to make it right now. So as you can see, everything's up. Both sides are all screwed in. Um, I went ahead and pushed those top panels all the way against that and set my brackets. Um, this is just the same detail as the other side, did it the exact same way. And the side, like the sides don't sway at all. So if you think about your sway, like if the sides don't sway, those rollers allow a little bit of movement, but basically if this side's not swaying, then there's really not going to be a ton that's making that middle sway. So hopefully it'll be okay. Um, and then of course, everything I just said about the overhead, I didn't even think about the openers, which will be like right smack dab in the middle. So maybe all this was for nothing. I don't know. But the next step will be the springs. Once I get the springs in, I can open them manually and um, that'll be 
enough for now. You know, if I can get automatic openers in here, it just seems like that'll be its own battle. But I feel it's, it's like 10 degrees out and windy. I've had the kerosene heater going basically like the whole time I've been working in here. I have my little electric heater cranking away in the corner. So I feel a sense of accomplishment just to have been able to come out here and get these tracks in. This has been such a battle doing this all myself. Like just getting the diagonals, just thinking of the logistics of like me climbing up, finding a way to hook the tape, coming over here, having two ladders, or dropping the tape down, running a ladder over. Um, and if your diagonal's off, you got to measure your width and find out where your width is off. It's, it's just been so much legwork doing this all myself. Um, the guy that was supposed to help me actually just stopped by and stuck his head in and was like looking at everything. And I was like, this has been a lot of work to do myself. And he was like, oh, yeah. Um, so, and then he left. <laughs> but uh, probably glad that I did it myself because I did it the way I wanted to do it, for better or for worse. And... Um, now i just have to do the torsion springs which i've heard can be a pain um i don't know as far as where they mount if we'll have enough space over the doors um, without adding some more bracing from the um from the top down i think the garage door guide said i might need a two by six to span that so i do have another piece of painted two by six over here that i can use but for now, I think I'm gonna take a break. All right, guys, I've been working on these torsion springs. Um, they're pretty straightforward. The most confusing part is that there is a, um, there is a supplemental torsion spring installation that comes with it. And then there is this um, supplemental large door thing that also has torsion spring stuff in it. And if you look, there's like some differences between the two. And then, you know, the instructions say to reference this. And then this says that it is the one to go by. But then if you look at some of the details, they actually aren't all like the heavy duty stuff that's in the taller door thing. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. The only, really like basically they show you this picture until you install it like this. Um, the only thing that threw me off is this is our diagram and this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side and then these springs are stamped rw and lw and rw is the left hand side and lw is the right hand side you would kind of think l would be left and r would be right um uh, not the case. I have no idea why they would do that. It's so confusing. Um, I had to look. I was like going back and forth and I'm like, wait a minute. The colors don't match up. Anyway, so they tell you to use two people to put this up there and screw it in. If you're new to the channel, that's not going to happen. I'm going to do it myself. Um, I did have to add, this has, this has a center brace and then this bushing goes in here, this nylon bushing. So you install it with the center brace in the middle and that bushing. It doesn't seem to matter which bushing the side's on. Actually, one diagram shows it on the left side, one diagram shows it on the right side. Um, the instructions just say to put it, and they say it only comes with one. The bushing goes in the middle, that bracket goes in the middle, and this isn't even attached to the bar, it just sits there, so. The springs go on, the pulleys go on, the screws on the pulley face the springs, it says, and then these end brackets go on. And you hoist the whole thing up in place and screw it into the wall. Um, the cables that come out from the bottom of the door are gonna clip into these pulleys. And then you use two steel bars, which it says like you can use an 18 inch bar, but I picked up some longer bars today. I'm sure I had half inch bar somewhere, but I didn't feel like looking for it. Everything's kind of a mess. It's cold outside, so. And then you wind them. So they have the winding stamped on here um, and it's 9.44 turns. So if you, um, if you know a way that you can measure uh, four hundredths of a turn, please let me know. That's a little silly. Now, uh, I last left you lamenting the fact that a traditional style garage door opener like these that I've prepared to use would take away my overhead space. 
I didn't want to do that. So I took those two extensions I had back to Home Depot, got my money back, and instead, I had to drive an hour to find a Home Depot that had these in stock because none of the ones near me even stock them normally. These are wall mount garage door openers. They're stupid expensive, 530 bucks each. Um, they do, they are compatible with your iPhone. It's nice, they have a backup battery so it'll work with the power off. Both great features if these were gonna be in your garage. Both not strictly necessary here, but um, really cool system and they come with instructions you know with all the stuff or me trying to use that used stuff I'd have to like down the instructions and figure it out so this is probably better anyway but this part mounts to your wall the motor and everything's in here and then this part here this is your output shaft this is going to go um, to this and that's going to go on the end of these torsion spring assemblies that we're putting in so the torsion spring is still going to bear the weight of the door that rides up and this motor is just going to help it so these are called a direct drive um i don't think they are i think if you take these covers off there's actually like a little pulley in the motors down the bottom but it doesn't matter um the good part is those mount to the wall so they're going to mount like right up there and that's going to leave all this overhead for maybe like if we want to put a lift in in the future or if we want to use a gantry crane or tilt the cab on a, on a cab over truck um like the one on my shirt so that is definitely the way to go to me i just decided like hey this is worth the expense now do it the way i want it the first time and that was like kind of a uh a tough bullet to bite it's 1100 bucks for the pair of those but um yeah that just seemed a lot better to me than trying to like rig up something that would swing down now <clears throat> these outlets are here because we're going to put garage door openers directly under them instead we're going to put garage door openers here and i initially thought about because we already have those wired that we could run it over but i'm just going to leave those up there i have this cord reel that i want to mount on the ceiling anyway so we may end up just mounting this um, in the center here at the end of the garage doors and then we can i can put just like a six foot plug on this we'll get like a heavy gauge plug and plug it into those because that's its own 20 amp circuit but um, we are running a new circuit all the way here to the front wall with some more mc um, hopefully we have enough it's like we should just barely have enough we'll be adding a 20 amp breaker we put now what's on that front wall just to have power to the garage doors so um just when I thought I was done with wiring, I wasn't. Anyway, I'm gonna work on um, installing these. Um, I need to finish the torsion bar install first. So we're gonna try and hoist that in place and um, we'll see how that goes. I'm probably gonna try and do a more detailed video on the garage door openers because I haven't seen people do many detailed installs on those. But for now, we're just gonna try and get these torsion bars up. They have to go up before I can do anything with the garage door openers. Close your eyes.
All right, so we've got our torsion spring assembly up there and everything's tight. The only thing we haven't done is wind our torsion springs, which is like, um, people treat it like it's a boogeyman. Like, I guess it could hurt you, but it seems pretty straightforward. The instructions say 4.44 turns and we tighten those um, uh, set screws on the end. The only thing is um, I could go ahead and do that and see how the garage door works. This is going to go on the end. Um, if you look at how that tube was just installed, it's kind of like sticks out. Eh, yay, so far on one side, so far on the other. I wasn't exactly sure. I would like to put the door openers on this side and this side if they'll fit. Um, that way I don't have to run wire all the way to the other side for no reason. So... I am uh, just trying to figure out if I would be better off tightening the sets, the um, torsion springs now and setting that, seeing if they work manually, or go ahead and try to install the opener. Now I can slide it back and forth the way it needs to be. I don't think it's going to be a super big deal to just try and tension those and see how it works. So I think that's probably the best thing to do. All right, guys. First thing I'm doing is just kind of run those bolts in so that when I do get them. So the right number of turns, they're kind of already in where they need to be. I take this and make a big blue line here. I want that to be real easy to see. And they say to turn them up. Tight, go an extra inch and a half, start turning a half. Half a turn, half a turn, and a half a turn. So a half a turn, and a half a turn, and a half a turn. All right. So we've got our vice grips holding some of the tension on here. I'm going to scoop our ladder over and we're going to repeat it from the same the other side. Alright, so we come back up and we take our vice grips off that I clamped that rod with. And um, we do have some. So now we got our clamps off 
Um, we do have some MC cable here that they do not want in the way. They should, they should actually open on their own, which um, is probably pretty boring to most of you, but we need to work on some of the exciting things actually. Oops, we have water. Because I'm done. That's crazy how much longer the tracks are than the doors. No, I'm just going over this. I can't remember if I mentioned this before. I ended up installing an extra vertical upright for some scrap tube I had. And then I had to put these two by six scraps um, to have something to put the lag screws into. Uh, so this is all like when that guy said he would put wood in. Like this is why, because you're holding stuff up and just lag screwing it in. You wouldn't want to be doing like big self tappers or drilling holes or whatever. And I've actually had, <coughs> like I had to flip that center bracket because I put it in wrong. So if you need to do something, you need to adjust something in metal, it's very unforgiving wood, you just take a screw out and put another one back in. So I guess that's why he said that, so that's smart. But um, anyway, I would pull this wood in. It's crazy how much putting that upright in and then putting this wood all the way up to that um, rafter. This is, if you remember me pushing this before, this is like rock solid now. I mean, of course, the center brace is back, braced back to the roof. Um, and then you know that this is screwed into that with the L bracket, but it's also that wood is all holding it together. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really like the front of this garage was floppy before and it is rock solid now. And those, um, the sheet metal up there, since it has those vertical uprights, it doesn't like flutter in the wind like it used to a little bit. So that's definitely an improvement. All right, well, I need to do the other side, but I want to do this opener first on this side. So then when I do the other side, I can probably just go ahead and hook it up and I'll know like how that tube and stuff needs to be. And we may end up actually trimming the edge of this tube if it comes over too far. So as you can see, uh, the tube doesn't need to extend past those brackets. Those pulleys tighten down, actually hold the tube side to side. So, but you know, I have stuff I want to move in here. These doors have been in here for a couple days. So I can't like bring stuff in with my tractor forks. So it's really nice to be able to just open the door and get stuff inside. Now we will have a whole other adventure with our door openers. If you want to see more about the openers, I'm going to do a video just on them, um, I think, because I think it would just, this video is going to be slow enough the way it is. Have to break it into a couple parts. But I haven't seen many um, videos on these. So anyway, that's it for now. Um, look for the other video on the garage door openers and tomorrow hopefully we'll get an electric opener in here.